Today I'm diving headfirst into Romark Trilayer Acrylic on the Bolt Pro 32 to see what works and what doesn't. If you're just getting started with this material on this machine, you're in the right place. Let's figure this out together. Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Brett and this is my laser garage. If you're new here, my wife and I run a full-time laser engraving business out of our home, and this channel is all about helping you make the most of your laser and CNC machines. Today, we're diving into a fun one. Hat patches made from Romark's Tri-Layer Acrylic using the Bolt Pro 32 by Thunder Laser. And stick around because not only are we gonna make acrylic hat patches, but towards the end of the video, I'll show you how I'm using the Bolt's print and cut feature through Lightburn to cut out custom patches I printed on my UV printer. You're not gonna wanna miss that. Let's get started. So first off, what is Romark Tri-Layer Acrylic anyway? Well, it's a laser-friendly, flexible acrylic with three layers, a top, middle, and a bottom. When you engrave through the layers, different colors are revealed, giving you super crisp, high contrast designs. It's perfect for signage, nameplates, and of course, hat patches. In my case, I'm starting with the red, white, and blue version, which has a white top layer, blue middle layer, and a red bottom layer. What drew me to this material for patches is the bold look you get without paint filling. You engrave, wipe it off, and you're done. That's a huge time saver, especially for production work. And with the Bolt Pro 32's 20 inch by 32 inch bed, I could fit a full 12 by 24 sheet of Romark without needing to trim it down. That's a big win if you're going for high volume order. So before I touched a real design, I started with a bunch of material test grids in Lightburn. This is crucial when working with any new material and with Trilayer Acrylic, it's even more important. I had to figure out what colors get revealed at different power levels so I can design my patches accordingly. This was honestly a shot in the dark for me at first because I've never used this material before and didn't know how the Bolt Pro 32 would respond. So I did what most of us do. I hit up YouTube. I found a lot of helpful info from Emily over at Wild Willow, Robert from Computer Creations, and Gord from LaserNug. If you're watching this channel, I'm sure you've seen all their channels before, but if you haven't seen them, I'll link them in the description. They each had solid tips and starting points. That said, I still had plenty of testing to do on my end because of my specific machine. Let me pause for a second to make this point. I always try to share my actual settings in videos like this, and I often look up what others are doing too. But settings should just be starting points. Even if you have the same machine, you might not get the same results. It's all about dialing it in for your setup. And the cool thing about lasers, there's rarely just one right way to do things. Multiple paths can get you to the same destination. So get out there, test, and see what works for you. So before I start with the testing, let me tell you a little bit more about my setup. I'm using the stock 2.5 inch lens on the Bolt Pro 32 at standard focus height and low air assist. I started out super conservative and barely got through the first layers initially. But with each test card, I gathered more and more info and adjusted my approach accordingly. It could feel slow at first, but it's worth the material. These test cards are valuable reference points down the line. And three or four tests later, I started getting decent results for the blue and red layers. I experimented with different power, speed, and line interval settings. Then I ran some multi-pass fill tests because I knew a second light pass would be needed to help clean things up. You'll notice some soot buildup when engraving Romark, but it cleans up great with a little Dawn power wash and a nylon brush. An old toothbrush would probably work pretty good too. Now, one thing I noticed was scan lines in my engravings. That's due to the Bolt's super fine dot size from the RF tube. If you're used to DC glass laser tubes, this might catch you off guard. To tighten up the fill, I defocused the laser by three millimeters in light burn, which increased the spot size and blended those lines a lot better. You can also just lower your line interval, but defocusing let me help keep my speeds up. Again, multiple paths, same goal. Don't be afraid to try a new material. No one is perfect right out of the gate and going through this type of testing process can really help you get familiar with your laser. Look at all these test grids I ran. It took time, but now I know exactly what to do next time. And if I wanna try a different tri-layer combo or a double layer combo, I bet I'll dial it in even faster next time. All in all, I spent an afternoon learning the material and pressing my first ever hat patch. And I gotta say, 
Turned out pretty cool. But hold on, we're not done yet. Let's try one more version using the Bolt Pro 32's print and cut feature along with my UV printer. So now that I've got some solid results on the laser, I wanted to push hat patches a little bit further and show you something really cool. Print and cut workflow using my UV printer and the Bolt Pro 32. For this bonus patch, I used my Artist Jet Trust 6090 UV printer to print full color artwork onto adhesive back leatherette from Lone Star Adhesives. This stuff is supposed to work great for hat patches. It's flexible, vibrant, and should take UV ink beautifully. I laid out a small batch of designs in my RIP software and added two registration marks to the artwork. These are the secret to making the print and cut feature work perfectly. Once the sheet was printed, I brought it over to the bolt and ran the print and cut wizard in Lightburn. This wizard walks you through everything necessary to cut these shapes out. It's super intuitive and very easy. You just have to align the laser to the two printed registration marks. And on the Bolt Pro 32, that's incredibly easy thanks to its precise integrated red dot pointer. That accuracy really pays off here. After alignment, I selected my cut outlines in Lightburn, sent the job to the bolt, and let it do its thing. And look at that, perfectly cut, full color patches. You could scale this up to dozens of patches at a time, all with the edge to edge UV print and precision cutouts. This opens up a ton of creative options. Logos, artwork, gradients, full color, all possible with the right combination of a UV printer and a powerful, accurate laser like the Bolt Pro 32. I'm working on a full, dedicated tutorial that goes step by step through this process from artwork setup to finished product. So if this is something you wanna explore more, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss that one. So there you have it. My first dive into making custom hat patches with the Bolt Pro 32 and Romark Tri-Layer Acrylic. Plus a bonus look at combining UV printing with the laser's print and cut feature. This project really pushed me to learn something new and I hope it gave you a clear look at what this setup can do. Whether you're just starting out or thinking about adding this combo to your workflow, I hope this video took out some of the guesswork. I know when I was getting started, it was real world content like this that helped me gain confidence. And that's exactly why I make these videos. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and let me know. Drop a comment with any questions or tips of your own and consider subscribing if you haven't yet. I've got a ton of content coming up from more rotary work to UV printing workflows and file design tricks that actually save you time. And if you really wanna to get to know what the Bolt Pro 32 can do, be sure to check out my full playlist where I cover everything from rotary setup, cutting performance, maintenance, and much, much more. I'll drop that link right here on the screen and down in the description as well. Trust me, there's a lot this machine can do and I put it through its paces so you can get a great idea of what it can do. Thanks again for watching everyone and I'll see you on the next one.